What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. We are talking about every single MCU project in the lead up to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which is coming out so, so, so very soon. We are within 10 days. Get excited. <laughs> um, you got George and Max here from the Unqualified Film Bros podcast. You know, we wrapped up the uh, Infinity Saga yesterday with Avengers Endgame, talking about the epilogue. We're talking Spider-Man Far From Home. Spin the logo. Max, what do you think? Uh, what an intro, George, I have to say. There we go. What a way to kick us off. Oh, yeah. Um, into the post-Infinity War, uh, Infinity Saga um, storyline. I mean, th- you're absolutely right that this is, this, is, this is an epilogue to Endgame. It's not... I mean, it, yes, it's a sequel to Spider-Man Homecoming, but this wraps up the culmination of the MCU. And I have to say, it does a really good job. Um, lots of closure um, while keeping tons of doors open. Uh, lots of room for Spider-Man, Peter Parker to breathe. Um, you know, introducing some great characters, but continuing storylines, right? Um, with Ned, MJ, Flash, um, Betty all Brown. around, so much fun. Mr. And, Harrington. Yeah. Mr. Harrington's great. Nick yeah. Fury, Maria Hill. Sorry. Yep. Nick Fury, Maria Hill. There you go. Yeah, I mean, what a great film. And I know we'll get into um, Mysterio in a little bit, so we can yeah. keep that separate, right? Let's, let's table that for the moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think this is a, a really good Spider-Man film. And I think that's one of the strengths of the MCU Spider-Man projects, mm-hmm. is that they've been really, really fun entries that feel like the comics in that Spider-Man's just a kid. You know, he's still in high school in this movie. Sound like Spider Man 2, where he was off, you know, into college. It's not like Amazing Spider Man 2, where he was graduating. It's, you know, junior, end of junior year for, uh, for Peter Parker, and he's going on this summer trip. Everyone he knows, or half of everyone he knows, has just blipped back, including himself. You're really seeing you know, who he's going to be in the post-Tony Stark age. And of course, you know, obviously we'll talk about No Way Home next week. But, you know, in, in this sense, it's it's about Peter Parker still very much a kid and wanting to hold on to that. Homecoming was very much about, you know, I want to have more responsibility. Make me an Avenger already. Why haven't you made me an Avenger yet? I'm ready for more. And this one is... I just want to have my summer vacation. I just want to be with my friends. I just want to tell MJ how I feel about her. It's Peter trying to, I don't want to say shirk responsibility because with great power, uh, but it's, the kids had enough just for one trip. You know, he's just fought Thanos. He's just been made an Avenger. Half the universe has gone and come back. He deserves a break. And I I think that the the world, primarily Talos as Nick Fury, is saying, you know, you got to be the one to step up. It's it's time, basically. Yeah, and I think that's really interesting uh, that you bring that up and the parallels between the two, uh, the first two Spider-Man entries into the MCU, right? Is that in Homecoming, it's <clears throat> it's Peter Parker, it's Spider-Man that wants more responsibility. He even goes out and tries to take some, uh, and we see some of those results working out better, uh, some better than others. And then in, in Far From Home, it's other people putting responsibility on him. Um, and I think we'll re- I know we'll revisit this in our discussion of, of No Way Home uh, because I'll bring it up or somebody else will, um, probably George, because uh, I'll forget by then. <laughs> but 
in Far From Home, he is pushed. He himself is being pushed. He's not the one trying to take back responsibility. Um, and I think that's just really interesting um, to think about and follow as it's a really consistent and it's a really strong story arc, I think, um, as it uh, is very realistic to a lot of people's and their expectations of um, responsibility. Yeah, and, and segueing into talking about the film's villain here, that's what makes Mysterio, Quentin Beck, such a compelling character, is that for the first half of the film, Peter sees him as this adult figure who is the hero type, who can take on the responsibility of filling the shoes of Iron Man, filling the shoes of Captain America, filling that void in the world. That's why he gives him the Edith glasses. That's why, you know, he's working with him with Nick Fury. That's, you know, why they battle the elementals together in the first half of the film. And then you really see, I mean, it's hard not to talk about No Way Home having seen it and considering it takes place right after this film ends. But as much as that film matures Peter Parker, this film is about him realizing consequences of actions, more so than in Spider-Man Homecoming, because he messes up. He gives the Edith glasses away. He puts his friends, his family, his world in danger from Quentin Beck, and he's got to deal with that. He's not going to get bailed out by Tony Stark like he did in Spider-Man Homecoming. He's not going to have the Avengers to back him up. He asks Nick Fury, or he asks Talos as Nick Fury, about Captain Marvel, Thor, Doctor Strange. Is there anyone else who can do this? And no, it's, it's Spider-Man's story. And so, you know, Mysterio is a really good example of a Spider-Man villain brought to life from the comics because he is the impetus for Peter Parker finally accepting at the end of the you know second act of the film, I got to step up. Does that make yeah. sense? I don't know if I made sense there. Yeah, no, Scott, I was just thinking about that. because I think that's a really interesting point um, and definitely follows up on how much this film does mature Peter Parker, right? You know, you, we can talk about No Way Home another day and how much that film matures Peter Parker. But, you know, I think in Far From Home, it's the biggest leap. Um, and it is all the more impressive. And um, it's all the more impressive because Peter Parker was gone for five years. It's not like he had been able to learn those lessons across all of that time. No, he got blipped. And then came back having basically no time to go fight in the Battle of New York, uh, the Battle of the Hudson River, um, Upper uh, New York. The Battle of so, Earth. Battle of Earth, yeah. I mean, on the Hudson River. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> he just doesn't really have as much choice. And I think that is because all this power and responsibility is being put onto him rather than him trying to go out and bite off more than he can chew. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's going to be a great discussion for No Way Home. Yeah, but... In case you guys didn't realize, we're excited to talk about No Way Home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but one last thing before we get into rankings and ratings, I do want to fully flesh out a brief conversation about Mysterio. Mm -hmm. Because Jake Gyllenhaal is just so crazy and charismatic and just a really well-written, well-rounded, well-performed villain. And I think one of the strengths of the post-Infinity War Endgame era has been the writing for the villains and the performances of the villains. And Gyllenhaal is a great start to that, right? I think you're, I think you're completely right. I mean... Yes, they most of the villains that we've seen are kind of one offs. They're, you know, one and done. But but they have so much more depth 
and intricacy to them than some of the for uh, phase one and phase two villains um, that were a little bit one to two dimensional and you know didn't really serve much more of a plot than just okay we need a villain so let's yeah. just, let's throw one in there and make the villain pretty textbook pretty pretty bland yeah and not to mention one he starts as a hero and yeah. is revealed that reveal is fantastic uh, for people who don't know the comics um yeah. <laughs> to see mysterio presented as a hero and then have that reveal of him as a supervillain must have been pretty wild in the theater mm -hmm. um obviously those of us who know the comics we know mysterio is a villain as soon as he was called mysterio in the movie it's like oh yeah well we know who that's gonna end up being but the reveal was still really fun yeah and then of course he is the entire reason for what happens in Spider-Man No Way Home. But enough about No Way Home, George and Max. We're talking <laughs> sorry, about sorry. it next week. Sorry. So yeah, let's get into rankings and ratings. Yeah. Um, this is a stellar film. It's it's a lot of fun, like we said. Um, so I'm going to give it a 92 out of 100. Um, and then it'll be 8 out of 32 in my rankings. So very high up there for both. Yeah, um, I, I am a little bit lower on this one than you are. Just as of this last rewatch today, it, it sat a little bit lower than some of the ones that we've watched in the last couple of weeks. That's fine. It's still very high on my list. Uh, I'm going to throw it an 89 out of 100. It's just under the the films I've given a, a 92. Uh, a 92, not a 92. Um, you guys get what I mean. And then I'm going to throw it 13th out of 32 uh, for the projects in the MCU. Shout out Michael Giacchino for writing a great score. Shout out John Watts for great direction. I think that should just about do it for uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. We'll see you tomorrow yeah. for the uh, first project of Phase 4. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone.